going? This video is going to be how to make sense of all the different stimulant formulations available. So we'll go through a way of making sense of all the different amphetamines and all the different methylphenidates. So we know that stimulants are the first line treatment for ADHD. And there are a ton of different drugs available. There's over 30 different formulations of stimulants. So it can seem overwhelming to learn the differences between them, but I'm going to make it super simple so that by the end of this video, you know all the differences between all the different formulations. And I'm going to do that by looking at the four major ways that stimulants differ. So I'll be looking first at amphetamines versus methylphenidates, second at the different isomer mix, third at the different forms of administration, and fourth at the different delivery systems slash duration of action. So just a small pause in the video. If you enjoy this content or my other content, definitely head over to psycho.farm and check out the new antidepressant course. So I put together a course with a ton of videos that go over depression, SSRIs, SNRIs, TCAs, MAOIs, and the atypicals. I made it with the intent to be accessible and practical. I think it's worthwhile if you're a student or a practicing psychiatrist, you'll still get something out of it. But let's get back to the video. So let's get right to it. First, we're starting with methylphenidate versus amphetamine. So even though there are a ton of different stimulants for ADHD, they all distill down to two ingredients, methylphenidate and amphetamine. So first, let's just start with the mechanism of action. So these two drugs have overlapping but distinct mechanisms. Methylphenidate acts as an antagonist to dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake. So similar to how SSRIs work with serotonin, it blocks reuptake of DAT and NET, which leads to more dopamine and norepinephrine in the synapse. Now amphetamines, they also block the reuptake of dopamine and norepinephrine through DAT and NET, but they have an additional mechanism on top of this. So amphetamines are what we call pseudosubstrates. So a pseudosubstrate refers to a molecule that mimics the structure of a natural substrate. So it's not surprising when we look at the chemical structures of amphetamines, they're incredibly similar to dopamine and norepinephrine. So when amphetamine is taken at high doses, as a pseudosubstrate, it gets taken into the neuron. And in the presynaptic neuron, it targets the vesicles that contain the neurotransmitters. And more specifically, it targets VMAT2, which stands for vesicular monoamine transporter 2. This is like a little tube that transports the dopamine or the norepinephrine into the vesicle. So it acts as a pseudo substrate here where it displaces the stored neurotransmitters. So basically it leads to elevated levels of dopamine and norepinephrine in the cell, which it then gets released into the synapse. So I simplified this all a little bit, but the gist is that methylphenidate blocks the reuptake of norepinephrine and dopamine. Amphetamines also do this, but at high doses, they also displace stored dopamine and norepinephrine releasing even more neurotransmitter into the synapses. So this additional mechanism of action may help explain why amphetamines have a higher abuse potential and why they lead to more euphoric effects. So now let's look at the differences between amphetamines and methylphenidate. So we know that on average, amphetamines have a better effect size than methylphenidate, but it's typically pretty modest. When we look at who has good responses to these medications, we see that about 40% of patients respond really well to both, and then about 28% respond better to amphetamines and 15% respond better to methylphenidate. A big meta-analysis found that methylphenidate had a better acceptability in kids and that amphetamines had better acceptability in adults. So acceptability is a metric that measures the proportion of participants who left the study for any reason. So given that these drugs have a potential for abuse and euphoria, it's not the best metric for measuring how patients do on a medication. And I mention this because we know that amphetamines have more side effects. So amphetamines probably have a higher risk of mania and psychosis compared to methylphenidate. And it's not 100% clear, but it seems like methylphenidate does a lot better with comorbidities. So it might do better with regards to suicide, with borderline personality disorder, with OCD. And one of the bigger ones is that amphetamines are worse with regards to abuse potential. And lastly, whether these medications are neuroprotective or neurotoxic is not really clear cut. So their long-term effects aren't completely understood. And it's very likely that it depends on the dosage and for how long it's taken. But in general, it seems like methylphenidate does a little bit better in regards to neuroprotection. So to summarize the differences between methylphenidate and amphetamines, methylphenidate in general is a safer medication, has less abuse potential, it's better tolerated, but it may be a little bit less effective. So in my personal opinion, I think amphetamines are a more potent medication and a riskier medication. So I think it makes sense to use methylphenidate first. So that caps up the first major distinction between the different stimulants of amphetamines versus methylphenidates. The next video will go into the different isomer mixes and the different formulations available. So just click on the video on the left side to go to that video.